one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, creator of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. People of St. James, you have reflected on your ministry and discerned your choice for a new rector. We have chosen and called the Reverend Rachel to be our rector, and she has accepted. Good news. <laughs> I commend your choice and affirm this call. Rachel Jagelski Harrison. Presbyter of the Church of God, you have been called to work together with your bishop and fellow presbyters as pastor, priest, and teacher, and to take your share in the councils of the Church. Now, in accordance with the canons, you have been selected to serve God as rector of St. James Church, Plainsville, Ohio. This letter is a sign that you are fully empowered and authorized to exercise this ministry accepting the privileges and responsibilities as a priest of this diocese in communion with your bishop. Having committed yourself to do this work, do not forget the trust of those who have chosen you. Care alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. By your words and in your life, proclaim the gospel. Love and serve Christ. Nourish them and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them. Given under my hand and seal in the city of Cleveland on the 28th of August 2024 and in the second year of my consecration, the Right Reverend Anthony Jolly, Bishop. Are you, the people of St. James, ready to continue in your ministry with the Reverend Rachel as your priest? Yeah! Yay! lesson is from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Our psalm this evening is a portion of Psalm number 37. It can be found in your service leaflet. We will pray the psalm responsively by whole verse. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take life to the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous sword shine like the dawn, your vindication like the midday sun. The wicked watch for the righteous and seek to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their God, or let them be condemned when they are out of time. The Samaritan woman at the well said to Jesus, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do you know, we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. What a joy it is to be in this sacred space to celebrate God's mission and God's ministry. I know that we call it a new ministry, However, from my perspective, it's a long-standing ministry with some new folks, building on the work of the past almost 200 years. It's such an amazing and humbling experience for me to stand here in this pulpit as priest and preacher. Many of you know that my history is intertwined with St. James Church. This is where I first met the Episcopal Church fell in love with the liturgy and the beautiful music that enriched the services. This is where I became an Episcopalian through confirmation, where my children were baptized, and where I learned it's okay to question, where it is not only okay but encouraged to grow spiritually, and where I learned love for others, neighbor, stranger, and friend. This place has a history of growing and sending out people who love the Lord and who love to take the good news into the world. I'm aware of at least four priests, one who began as a Daughters of the King missionary out of the Bishop Rogers chapter here, a rector who became bishop, and many dedicated laypersons who have seen to it that the neighbor is loved and cared for. There are so many examples of history here. Probably the best known is the lunch program that began in 1983 by serving Salvation Army clients on weekends. In 2003, the program was designated a Jubilee Center by the National Church. And in 2010, the program expanded to provide Monday and Tuesday night meals as well as on holidays. Now this designation was established by an act of the 1982 General Convention as a ministry of joint discipleship in Christ with poor and oppressed people wherever they are found to meet basic human needs and to build just society. The program, as described by the National Church, is based on scripture. And the church says this about Jubilee. The Old Testament year of Jubilee was the 50th year, the seventh Sabbath year, in which debts were forgiven, Hebrew slaves were set free, and alienated lands were returned to their former owners. The name is from the Hebrew Yahel, or Ram's Horn, which was blown to proclaim the beginning of this special year. The Jubilee is mentioned in Leviticus and Numbers, and this year of liberty and release expresses God's sovereignty over creation and provides a reminder that human beings are stewards of creation who must live justly. The directions for the year of Jubilee in Leviticus include the repeated instruction, you shall not wrong one another. And although the year of Jubilee may not have been actually practiced, it upholds personal rights, human dignity, and family responsibility as ideals. Does that sound familiar from our baptismal covenant? The year of Jubilee was to be a time of equality and justice for all. St. James certainly lives Jubilee, and there are other examples of this living Jubilee and living the gospel. The St. James Foundation started in 1910 with $75, and it's grown from there and it lives today. In 2019, St. James hosted the first public pride event in Lake County, the Family Pride Fair, for which the church received the Community Award from NAACP Lake County. During the pandemic, the meal program and a code blue ministry network continued in spite of the pandemic with new protocols and new partners. The parish practiced faith giving in the past under Father Terry Russell, and there were no pledge cards. 
but through faith it worked and the money came. And as I said, St. James is a participant in the code blue emergency winter shelter that is so badly needed in this county. And that's just to name a few of the things this parish has done over the 200 years. All of these offerings to God align with the story of the Samaritan woman in our Gospel reading. The story of the Samaritan woman is a pretty well-known story. However, we don't often emphasize what this experience of the Samaritan woman can really reveal to us. We see that she reveals who Jesus is, the Son of God, here on earth, but how often do we focus on the result of her discovery? She listens to Jesus' words, she understands, believes, and accepts what he has said, and then goes and tells her people to come and see. She becomes an evangelist, a witness to Jesus, Jesus, the Messiah that even the Samaritans had been waiting for, bringing the people of her town, other Samaritans, to believe in the Son of God here on earth. And we see that through this exchange, Jesus crosses social and cultural norms in speaking to the woman, and she does the same by answering him. Jesus sets an example for us. We are to reach out to those who may differ from us, to carry the good news to others, as do you, the people of St. James. And commentator Anna Carter Florence asked a question that really made me stop and think, and I think it will make you do that as well. And she states, Jesus is thirsty at the well, and we are the ones with the bucket. Can a little thing like a cup of cool water offered in love be the beginning of a salvation journey? She says, yes, and we will never know until we meet the stranger and tend to the human needs first. Wow, we hold the bucket. You, the people of St. James, figured this out a long time ago as you have and will reach out to meet the stranger week after week, day after day, ready with the cup of cool water and more, freely given, feeding Jesus along the way. And you, the good people of St. James, have called a leader that is well experienced in feeding Jesus through feeding and supporting others. Reverend Rachel has demonstrated a dedicated, caring heart that is big enough to support all the tomorrows of caring for others, all the tomorrows of loving our neighbors. So together, as priests and people, you will answer the call and commissioning given to Joshua by God. God said to Joshua, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And as you move forward, I offer this prayer for you, written by the Right Reverend William Scarlett. O oh God, give wings to our hopes and rest to our fears. Give us courage, that believing in you, we may dare things for you. Save us from little faith, which makes us the victims of anxieties and fears, and puts us to shame and confusion. Give us dignity and worth by sending us some work to do for you. Fire our wills to accomplish something for your kingdom before we leave this world. May the spirit that was in Jesus possess our minds and wills, that we share his indignation, his purposes, and his radiant faith in you. Amen. Amen. <coughs> St. James. 
In holy baptism, we receive full adoption through God's grace and full empowerment for ministry through the Holy Spirit. Will you work together as partners in the mission of the Church to reconcile all people to God through Christ? The water of baptism signifies our eternal covenant with God. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to Christ, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We pray, O God, sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that all who in baptism are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Beloved, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the Spirit of God, who searches the heart and knows our deepest needs, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all who yearn for Christ Jesus.
Let us thank God whom we worship here in the beauty of holiness. Eternal God, the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, much less the walls of temples made with hands. Graciously receive our thanks for this place and accept the work of our hands, offered to your honor and glory. For the church universal, of which these visible buildings are the symbol. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For your presence, whenever two or three have gathered together in your name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For this place where we will be still and know that you are God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For making us your children by adoption and grace, and refreshing us day by day with the bread of life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For the knowledge of your will and the grace to perform. Amen. Amen. For the fulfilling of our desires and petitions as you see best for us. Amen. 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 For the pardon of our sins, which restores us to the company of your faithful people. Amen. Amen. For the blessing of our vows and the crowning of your years with your goodness. Amen. Amen. For the faith of those who have gone before us, and for our encouragement by their perseverance. Amen. Amen. For the fellowship of St. James and all your saints. Amen. 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 Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. And you are exalted as head over all. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Ministry with the feeding program is just extraordinary. You are known far and wide for the gifts you bring to this community, and I cannot thank you enough for all that you do. I am so proud to be the Bishop of St. James in Haynesville for the work you do, for the extraordinary people you are, and how you are sharing the wonderful good news of Jesus Christ's love with the world. Keep it up. Thank you for all this work. You chose well. Reverend Rachel is spectacular, and her husband will. I cannot wait to see what you all get up to together with the power of the Holy Spirit at your backs. You're going to be extraordinary, and you already are. And now, beloveds, let us walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to her.
our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
God for you, the beloved children of God.
loving God. We give you thanks for restoring us to your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, resilient, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Beloved ones, we have celebrated this new pastor relationship in the great prayer of the church. Reverend Rachel, I commend to you your love and care, the people of St. James. My siblings in Christ, I commend to your love and care, your new rector, colleague, and friend, Rachel. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The of and Blessed be the name of the Lord. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.